uh, Connor Ben marches on again. He's getting more and more impressive, Eddie. Impressive, he does. You know, he's um, he's becoming a real problem, a handful for for the division. You know, we were just talking off air about Terence Crawford and Errol Spence, and he's got a couple of fights before he's in with those guys. But you know, when you look at British boxing at the moment, you've got all these sort of the stars of British boxing that seem to be coming towards the end of their career or the back end. You know, you talk about Tyson Fury, Dillian White, even AJ, you know, still got years left, but at the backish end of his career, you know, Kel Brook, Amir Khan, all these names. Show me the young gun that can go and fill stadiums in mega fights. And I see that as Conor Ben. You know, you saw him headlining in Liverpool in December, Manchester at the weekend. He's from Ilford in Essex. So, you know, this is a young man that I believe is a superstar of the sport. So exciting. You know, very rarely do you see a fighter these days come out and just tee off on his opponent from the first round. So his progression's been incredible. From a young man that was just Nigel Ben's son, that was a bit of a gimmick, you know, didn't look like he had any any future at world level, to a real world welterweight contender. And hopefully back out in the summer, and we need to step him up now. You know, he's had that education. His progression's been perfect. Now everyone's calling for the big fights, and, and that's what we've got to deliver. But I'm listening to you there. Is he ready for a Terence Crawford? Not yet, in my opinion. No. Amir Khan? Yeah, I think Amir, it's a bad fight for Amir Khan. You know, I mean, the way Amir Khan was there on Saturday, you know, I like Amir. <laughs> I mean, he's been calling me when we've sort of been talking about maybe he wants to come back and then look at Connor. He got in the ring after. He didn't look like he was that keen, to be honest with you. And I wouldn't be keen. And Kel Brook, you know, all these guys, we've been pushing those fights. But I think they look at Connor and go... Like, I don't want him in my life. Like, I don't want this horrible little bulldog... Like I'd rather fight, you know, Kel's thinking, I'd rather fight Amir Khan, he's at the end of his career, or Chris Eubank Jr. He's yeah. like, do you really want to get in there with Connor? Because he'll set about you from the first round. And he's a handful. But, you know, Terence Crawford, Errol Spence, these are special fighters. We're talking, you know, Mikey Garcia, Danny Garcia, Adrian Broner, Keith Thurman, Barrios, you know, Hooker, like these world level guys that can go and just give him that next step because I'm so cautious not to get it wrong with Conor Ben because I say he's the future of British boxing. But at the same time, we know we're under pressure from step people up. saying we need to step up. Is it hard to kind of control that? Because I can imagine he's probably wanted to go and want to fight these guys. Mm. I want to fight Terence Crawford, Errol Spence. Is it hard to kind of he's a nightmare. him a little bit? He's a nightmare, <laughs> you know, because he knows. Look, there's massive money out there. Yeah. But I said to him, when you've got, some, when you've got someone like Conor Ben. You know, you've got that diamond, and it really is a diamond in the rough. You just you keep polishing it, you know, and you but you don't make a bad move. I could put him in with Terence Crawford. We could do that now in a stadium in London. Mm. He, in my opinion, right now he'd get beat by Terence yeah. Crawford. What sort of development is that for a great young yeah. fighter that could be a huge star of British boxing? So we've got to listen to Twitter and we've got to listen to the fans, but at the same time we've got to be smart and we've got to make sure the progression is correct. But it is definitely time now for a nice solid step up for yeah. Conor Ben because I believe he's a future world champion yeah. in a really tough division by the way oh, I mean probably the toughest oh, division yeah, in superstars boxing. in that yeah. division um, let's talk about Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano um, we were just chatting off air about how big this fight has become and about how actually the, the attention of the world feels like it's really focused on this um, it's groundbreaking for a number of different reasons Madison Square Garden is the setting um, you've had involvement in this since the very beginning Eddie how proud are you of how it's developed and it hasn't even happened yet it's amazing I mean we've had more media credential requests for this than we have I think for any fight we've ever done you know and, and all kinds of mainstream media when we went to Madison Square Garden and they said you know you've got to do Taylor Serrano in the big room there because they've got another sort of theatre venue that's 4,000 I was like oh god <laughs> Are you sure? And, you know, we, we're up to like 14, 15,000. It's going to be a sellout, you know, come April 30th. And it's just incredible. And we were talking off air about you know, there's a real... I feel like sometimes with women's sport in general, there's a feeling and a movement from some sort of sponsors or promoters or broadcasters that goes, it's something we should be doing. I, I don't, Yeah, but I don't think that provides longevity. It's got to be good enough. Mm. But what's happened with women's boxing is it's good enough. The, the product is good enough to be sustainable for the future. And that's where you've got a chance with something. Taylor Serrano is the perfect example of all the hard work that's gone into women's boxing. And now they get their moment, just like on the football a couple of weeks ago, at the Bernabeu with Real Madrid and Barcelona. Mm. Same thing. It's that moment in time for women's sport and women's boxing that changes everything. And Katie Taylor has been you know, the driver of that. You know, We'll take some credit, but we've probably done 1% of what Katie Taylor's done over the years to get this moment. And... You know, like I said, it's gone from, wow, you know, Taylor Serrano to actually... And when I break it down, forget women's boxing, forget men's boxing. This is a great fight. 
it's almost like Mayweather Pacquiao of women's boxing. You know, you've got an undisputed champion against a seven division world champion. And the greatest compliment I can pay to this fight is people will talk about it as a female fight, but by the time it comes around, like there's another fight that night, Shakur Stevenson is fighting Oscar Valdez in an, in a unification fight on ESPN. What an amazing fight. Mm. No one's talking about it. No one's talking about it. Everyone that night will be dialed in to Taylor Serrano, and that's the greatest compliment I can give. And uh, I can't wait to see Katie walk out on that stage, on that platform. It'll be a very proud moment. You've also got Canelo Bivol coming up on May 7th in Vegas as well. So back-to-back weekends of, of just incredible fights on the zone. Um, and that one, it almost feels like, again, is a little bit in the shadow of... I know, who would have thought it? You know, time that comes on, I mean, that's Cinco de Mayo weekend, you know, the Mexican uh, party weekend in Las Vegas. It's a dream come true, you know, back-to-back weekend. This is a dangerous fight. You know, I was just saying to Darren... Dimitri Bivol is a guy that's in his complete prime, WBA light heavyweight world champion. Canelo keeps taking these risks, moving up in weight. Everyone just presumes he's just going to walk through these guys, but here he's actually got a real prime light heavyweight world champion. I think it's a really dangerous fight, but yeah, that's going to be a week, two weeks to remember. MSG and, and Vegas, we're going to have some fun. I can't let you go without asking you a, a question about AJ and, and where he's at at the moment with the fight. Where is it location sorted yet? No, we're, we're finalising that. The fight's all done, all agreed. It's 100% Anthony Joshua against Alexander Usyk, the rematch. Um, we're finalising the location at the moment. His team are in London this week, so we're going to sit down with them. But I think two weeks' time we'll finalise the date. will be July and uh, hopefully AJ can become a three-time world heavyweight champion. Amazing. Eddie, always a pleasure having you in here. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You. Enjoy this weekend. Enjoy the next few weeks because they are huge in the world of boxing. Um, there you go, Eddie Han on uh, TalkSport this morning. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.